are going to nail Ripley Holden's sorry ass. You got that business plan we talked about? I have. It's a tissue of lies on bogus statistics. Oh, that's just the kind I like. He trusts you with a spare set of keys. He trusts me with a lot of things. You are not my lover! I got engaged today. You did what? Why you? I need you, and you need me. So it's all my fault. Oh! Finally he gets there. <sighs> Danny! Danny! You've just come here and confessed to a very serious crime. Now, why would I want to keep that off the record? Or should I go? If you say that you are mine, I'll be here till the end of time. So you've got to let me know. Should I stay or should I go? Not this shit. It's you always tease, tease, tease. You're happy when I'm on my knees. You don't need this. This is harassment. One day is fine and next is black So if you want me off your back Well come on and let me know Should I stay or should I go? Unexpected police raid, but apart from that, I'm sorry. About what exactly? Everything, really. Is all this happening because of what I did? You're in a position to make an offer on the house, or you're in a chain of some sort. Oh, I was forgetting. You're a policeman. You couldn't possibly afford it. That's right. Unless you're Jim Albright and take a backhander at every corner. Are you telling me that Deputy Chief Inspector Jim Albright takes bribes? Don't tell me I didn't mention it to you during one of your long, intimate chats you had about me. I'd hardly need long, intimate chats with Albright when you come in and confess all by yourself. Is that true? I'm admitting to moving the body to the arcade, nothing else. Since when? Yeah, but you see, the thing is, now that you've admitted that, it puts your late-night stroll on the night of the murder into a whole new light. I were pissed. Can't remember where I was or what time I got home. Ripley, what's this about you moving the body? We know that you got the taxi to drop you off at the arcade around 3.45 in the morning. The coroner puts his time of death at anything from two onwards. Nobody saw you that night. From 3.45 until... when? What? What time did you see your husband that morning? Just after 4 a.m. What? He called me to come and pick him up. He must have done it straight after he was dropped off. Um, it took me about 15 minutes to get there, so that wouldn't give him enough time to kill anyone, would it? You drove into Blackpool in the middle of the night and gave your husband a lift home? He was drunk. I didn't want him getting into any trouble. 
You seem very certain about the time. That's because the World Service was on the radio. Business report, 4 a.m. You'll have to make a statement. Of course. Didn't I tell you? Teach him right for going around and making false accusations. Well, that's for this woman. Played a blinder. Played a bloody blinder. World service business use for air. Look on his face. I know it was lovely, wasn't it? He had a face like a chewed rubber, the muppet. So what made you happier? That you got off the hook or that you made a fool out of Carlisle? You know what? It's too close to call. <laughs> Hey, and don't you go around thinking it's all right lying to policemen. Not when you got your mother here to do it for you. <laughs> World service. So where were you? What? Where did you go to? Well, they both know I didn't give you a lift home, so where'd you go? No idea. I was travelling by beer time machine. You can lose hours. And did you move the body? Did I, Eric? He only said that to stop them picking on Danny. And why were they picking on Danny? Who knows? That copper doesn't like us. That's all there is to it. Why men say only for Another full house. Hi, Ripley. So you're still here then? Yep. And my daughter's wearing a ring so bright she keeps starting fires near open woodland. <laughs> if it's about the money, I can let you have most of that back. Oh, don't insult me. It's not the money. Oh. Mind you, if there's any change, I wouldn't say no. Right. I love your daughter, Ripley. That's all there is to it. Yeah, you must do, Steve. You really must. You've been begged, battered and bribed and you still want to marry her. I do. But she'd want her dad there on her wedding day. She'd want your blessing. It's a joke. She's not even talking to me. If you had any idea how much she loves you, how much this is all tearing her apart, but you shouldn't, I really, you really should. What if I said sorry? What if I said sorry for that letter I sent your mum and dad all those years ago? What then? What do you mean? Would you leave her alone? I'm not marrying Cheyenne out of some kind of revenge thing, you know? Aren't you? Because if you want to put a knife into a bloke, then stealing his daughter's the great way of doing it. I've never it. held a grudge, Ripley. I just wanted to know why. Why do you send my parents a note saying I was bullying you when I've never spoken to you in all my life? Why do you pick on me? I put the names of all the lads from our year into our hat and I drew six out and you were just one of them. I was gonna kill myself. I wanted to give the school something to remember me by. But that's insane. So you had nothing against me, nothing personal in any way? No. It was just luck. Bad luck. Like it was bad luck that you met my daughter. Ripley, 
Holly Holm has confessed to moving the body to the arcade. What? Do you still want to stick to the alibi you gave him? Well, yes, because that's what happened. Is it? Yes. No, it's just that Ripley has made certain allegations that might compromise you as a witness. Allegations? What are you talking about? He implied that you had taken bribes during the course of your long and otherwise spotless career. Ripley said this. Is this right? He seems to think you've been informing on him. Probably his way of getting his own back. I shouldn't take it too seriously. Shouldn't I? So in the light of these allegations, you might want to rethink your loyalty to Ripley. Well, I mean, you were with him for most of the night. Maybe you're going to suddenly remember a fight he had with Mike Cooley. You were pissed after all. Who's to say it wouldn't suddenly all come back to you? They're going through with it, aren't they? Yes. They're getting married. I give up. I've tried everything. Well, maybe trying everything is what's throwing them together. Oh, well, thanks for that vote of confidence. You'll be accusing me of beating Steve up next. Oh, great. Thanks. Hey. What do you think I am? So that question you asked me this morning, about what I did that night, what exactly were you asking me? Well, you're behaving... Oh, I don't know. You're just not yourself these days. You don't go around confessing to moving bodies you haven't moved for no reason. I explained that. It was to protect Danny. Something just doesn't feel right. I can't explain well, it. Well, does it feel like I killed Mike Cooley? Eh? Is that what it is? No. No, I don't think that. Uh, well, are you sure? Come on, take a good look, because I'd like my wife to be sure that I'm not a murderer. I'm sure. So what's the problem? It crossed my mind that you might have done it. Don't you think that's bad enough? For you or for me? For both of us. Ah. <laughs> I trust you're not quizzing him on the finer points of his tax arrangements, Natalie, because I can promise you, you won't get a straight answer. So, tell me about the new investors. You know how nervous everyone is about the casino hotels. Well, anyone running one's got to have a clean reputation, but this slur on you, a dead man in the arcade, the investigation, bad financial management. What bad financial management? I released a large lump of your investment capital for you to pay a tax bill, and you blew it all on machines. It's an arcade! What do you expect? You need £100,000 by the end of the month. What you're forgetting is, I know better than anyone how to run an arcade. I'll, I'll build this place up, and a year from now, investors will be... You haven't got a year. You haven't got a month. You have got to remortgage the house, like I suggested. It's the only asset you can raise any funds against. So you're going to look into it? I can do better than that. I've brought the paperwork with me. Can I have a word? Of course. Over there? Ripley will get planning permission in the end, you know. His sort of always do. I don't know about that. Friends in high places. Not as high as mine. <laughs> Quiet. He's already confessed to moving a body. We think he killed a man. So why don't you arrest him? It's not as simple as that these days. I mean, you virtually need the corpse to testify before you have a case. Whoever killed that young man will pay eventually. Could pay sooner. If I had a witness who saw him going into the Whitecliffe Flats between four and five in the morning, a reliable witness, he 
who everybody would trust. Local figure. What are you asking me? To consider this. You don't want the arcade. I want Ripley to be charged with his crime. I think we have what is known as overlapping interests. Are you asking me to lie? I like to call it pragmatic idealism. Call it what you like. Still a lie. So you think you're going to take him down by sitting over there with a soppy banner, eh? Eh? Do you really think that is how this world works? We'd better get going, sir. I hate this place. I hate its cheap, cheery soul and its edge of violence and its freak show blood. Maybe Ripley didn't do it. He was in Haley's flat and he moved the body. Well, he's not denying that. And if he did do it, he's hardly likely to stash the body in his own arcade and then call us in, is he? People mess up when they commit a murder. It's one of the ways we catch them. It's the only way. How come you're so certain it's Ripley that you're trying to bully witnesses into giving false statements? Because I've reconsidered all the evidence. Right, nothing to do with the fact that his wife's blown you out there. What, are you saying that I'm in some way morally compromised? Maybe you want to lock Ripley up more than you want to solve Mike Hooley's murder. Yeah, maybe it's the same thing. From where I'm standing, it looks like your hurt feelings are more important than Mike Hooley's death. This tacky moral crusade of yours is not going to raise Mike Hooley from the dead. I know Hooley was a scally, and he screwed around, and not even his best mate seemed heartbroken when he died. It's our job to give a shit when nobody else does. Oh, that'd be nice. Maybe you could make a living writing greetings cards. Your words, not mine. You said them to me on the first day of the case before your dick started telling you what was right and wrong. I need a word. I told Carlisle some stuff. What sort of stuff? I didn't want to, but he said he was going to charge me with murder. What sort of stuff? Mike Hooley died in my flat. He just collapsed. What, on the job? No, before. We moved into the empty bedsit over the corridor, and then when you started emptying the bedsits, we panicked and put him in the arcade. By we, you mean you and Danny. Oh, so you know then. Whose bright idea was it to stash him in the arcade? It wasn't supposed to be there when you opened up. Where was he supposed to be? Standing as a trap and stop with a ticket to Fleetwood. Sorry, Ripley. All right. I knew if they'd found him in here, they'd have accused me. All right, all right. There's no harm done. Hey, but you didn't tell Carlisle about Danny being involved, did you? No. I said another girl helped me. Did he believe you? Not really. He thinks it's me, doesn't he? That's all right. Natalie bailed me out. Can't put too high a price on a good marriage. So have you and Danny been friends for long? <sighs> Don't tell me a good-looking lad like my son has resorted to paying for his portion. <laughs> How well do you know your lad? It's nothing like that. You help him out with his own work, what? He gets me drugs for the clients. Bloody... Is there anybody in this town he isn't supplying? It's not that heavy. Makes the amyl nitrate in the chemistry labs at school. Well, it's nice to know he's not wasted a good education. Why didn't you move Mike Hooley's body out of the arcade before I opened up? How oh, we're going to. I overslept. <sighs> Only a teenager could oversleep when they had a corpse to move. Sure, it was nothing to do with the Valium you took to take you down after the speed, then. Because I know if you're dealing it, it's odds on you taking it. Come on. Let me let you into a secret. You know when I'm feeling down? I go back to that railway track. Right. Do you want to know why? Because it reminds me of how strong I am. When I lay down on that track all those years ago, do you know what my name was? I thought we didn't talk about it. 
John Wesley Price, courtesy of me dear old dad. <laughs> I've not said that name out loud for 20 years. But now it seems like somebody else's name, somebody I don't even know. You want me to change my name? <laughs> no. This is a chance for you to change everything bad about yourself, including the drug dealing. It wasn't what I'd call dealing, not really. There are turning points in life, son. You just gotta spot them. You take me in your home, you know, we've had our ups and downs, but this hooli business has changed things for us, for the better. You can be anything you want to be now. Anything at all. I've got something to tell you. What? I'm sorry. About what? Well, I've been proud today. And other stuff. Not good stuff. Not for you and me. And I, I, I know I've been a bastard for a while. More than a while. Yeah, come on. It's bad manners to interrupt when a bloke's put himself through the ringer. Why are you bringing all of this up now? I mean, why wait till it got so bad? I'm going to be different. I've seen a change in you since I've been having this tough time. There's a sort of glow about you. It's made me realise that I'm still lucky. You know, the arcade could fall into the sea tomorrow, but I've got you and the kids. I'm still lucky. fellow officer that I um, might have had a conflict of interest. I see. On account of the fact that I love you. I'm late. I was wondering if you could talk to Dad about the wedding. Oh, I don't know if your dad will listen to me. Though. Please. He's been having a go at Steve again, trying to get him to cancel it. I mean, do you think Dad will even come to the wedding? Hey, hey, I'll try, all right? I just want him to be happy for me. Well, I'm sure he'll get used to the idea. Do you think so? You can worry about your family and try and make them happy, but in the end, they're just happy or they're not. I'll do what's best for you. Thanks. Go. 
on for pole dancing tonight, eh? A bit of a last night out. Oh, I can't make it. Oh, come on, I'll bring me torch. I've got a date with Mary. Good. <laughs> great. See, I didn't mess it up for you. Oh, no, far from it. She said you were such a prick, you made me look better. Hey, great. That's really great. Oh, yeah, and all that other stuff I said about Elaine. Oh, forget it. I already have. Oh, what the bloody hell have you been saying about me? Just returning a compliment. Did you tell Carlisle that I like to bung, eh? Oh, you nearly had Carlisle believing I killed Mike Hooley. Oh, Ripley, you don't know it was him. Who told him I had a run in with Hooley in the club, eh? Tell me that. Don't talk to me like one of your subnormal staff. Oh, no, God, turn right off your face. It yeah. was me. Lads, lads, it was me. It was me who stitched you up, not him. I talked to Carlisle. You little shit! Come on, get up, get up! Get up. Get up. You got me so confused, and there's words I could use. Get up, get up. Dad, Steve thought we should talk to you. I didn't choose who to fall in love with, you know. I didn't say, great, I'll go for some bloke my dad's age. It just happened. I look at Steve and I can't imagine living with anyone else. You must know what that feels like. Not when I look at Steve, I don't know. The thing is, we are getting married. I gathered that. <sighs> Cheyenne wants you to be there. I want you to be there. We want your blessing. What if I won't give my blessing? We'll do it anyway. It's tearing her apart, Ripley. I know you love her. I know you don't want to make it. Rather than you two elope, and what about if I pay for the wedding? Hey, would you let me do that? Yeah, of course we would. Organiser, you know, I the room, the caterers. Well, that'd be great, wouldn't it, Steve? The dress, flowers, transport, the lot. Yes, yes, yes. So you'll spend my money, but you don't care if you shit on my feelings. What? You don't want my blessing, you want my wallet. I told you it was a waste of time. The only way you can stay in control is by making everybody else's life a misery, isn't it? It's not my fault you can't see sense. You're just terrified I shall see you for what you are. Oh, I am. What's that? The same scared schoolboy who decided to torture his classmates with his suicide notes. No, wrong call there, mate. I left that boy behind on the railway track. You think it's that easy? It is if you're strong enough. Well, and this is strong, is it? Humiliating your daughter because she doesn't do what you say. Because she dares to marry someone you don't approve of. That's not love, it's blackmail. 
And it's just as weak as posting notes through doors and messing up people's lives for no reason at all. Blackmail, what are you talking about? Well, you've achieved one thing finally after all these years, Ripley. I actually feel sorry for you. I believe you that kind of man. Barry, lock the door. Right. Natalie, wait. These are the things that we won't do. We won't be together so long that we forget how we got together in the first place, and it doesn't matter to us or to anybody else. We won't go to bed in the afternoon on the strength of a smile across the room. We won't exchange our life stories and feel pangs of jealousy when we talk about old lovers. We won't get enough memories of our own to see us through the bad times. We won't read something in the paper and want to ring each other up just to talk about it. We won't ever go dancing and embarrass everybody but ourselves. We won't ever argue. We won't ever make up. We won't ever get to know each other so well that we take each other for granted. And we won't ever share a fish supper. You'd never share a fish supper anyway. <laughs> Caught them red-handed drumming my machines. My staff had to make a citizen's arrest. Had to send out for the novelty handcuffs. On a cert for assault? Yeah, me and all. Assault. You had five minutes on the roof. Barry here paid good money for that. They drilled the hole and then they emptied the tube. They even taped over it so the rest of the gang could come and rob me again afterwards. What well, gang's this then? The little Bisman Massive. Has, has Terry talked to you at all about me since I've fallen out? No, I've only talked about his Mary, his girlfriend. What's she like? Oh, figure like Halle Berry, face like Chuck Berry. <laughs> that didn't do the way around, I suppose. Yeah, I reckon one of us should go down there and rock the bed for them. Can you see why I thought it were you passing this shit to Carlisle? No, oh, I can't. Not if you had one ounce of respect for me. No, it's because I got respect for you that I thought you were doing it. I didn't think Terry had the balls, but you, balls like coconuts. So, you know, in a way, we're a compliment. Yeah, well, Terry's always liked that bit of class. You and I know that. No hard feelings. I saved me hard feelings for me lady friends. <laughs> Dead right. Oh, and uh, thanks for squaring it with Carlisle. That was above and beyond. What? Well, he's off me back. He's come off the case. I assume that were down to you. No, I didn't arrange it. Well, why is he backed off then? I don't know. Maybe he got fed up with getting nowhere. <laughs> yeah. Maybe. I'm leaving Blackpool tomorrow. I want you to come with me. I don't think I can do it that soon. I mean it. So do I. You've pretended to be someone you're not for long enough. You've done right by everybody except yourself. Now it's your turn. You deserve a second chance. Join you. If you've left here, wherever you go. No. 
You'll just find excuses not to do it. And you'll get used to living with the indecision and then you'll never leave. better than that. How much is here? 50,000. Well, I thought you were going to remortgage the house. I did. It turns out it isn't worth as much as perhaps you'd hoped. <sighs> 50,000 doesn't even cover the tax bill. No. It doesn't. And, uh, and then there's your running costs. Well, there's nothing for it. I'm just going to have to sell the flats. But you don't own the flats. Not technically, no, but Natalie does, and she'll sign them over. She already did. Into a trust for your children until their 21st birthdays. You don't have any claim on the flats. What? When did she do this? Last week, when you decided to remortgage the house. How did she know about that? <laughs> Maybe you left the paperwork out somewhere where she could see it. But she knows what this means to me. She knows. Well, what am I going to do now? Come on, Ma. Hey. Eh? I've always wanted to help you, Ripley. You know that, don't you? Yes, of course I do. So come on, what? I'd like to buy the arcade off you. <laughs> oh, God. Yeah, you got a couple of hundred grand lying around, have you? I wouldn't need it. I'd be buying the debt. I'd be doing you a favor. Maybe an accountant at the helm would help attract new investors. How come you can do that and I can't? Because Ripley Holden is no longer a reliable brand in the leisure and gaming industry. Shall we say, uh, what? 20 pounds as a token amount. 20, oh, you've stitched me up, haven't you, you little? I bet you even told Natalie, didn't you? I need a decision. Oh, I've made a decision. <laughs> Don't worry about that. What you're forgetting is I'm lucky and you're not. Tonight, I'm gonna have myself a real good time. I feel alive. Don't stop me, don't stop me, ooh, ooh, ooh. I like it. Don't stop me, don't stop me, don't stop me. Don't stop me, don't stop me, ooh, ooh, ooh. I like it. Don't stop me, don't stop me, don't stop me. Don't st
When I was a kid, I believed in God. And then something happened, I did something. I didn't believe in God anymore, just luck. These last couple of weeks, I've realised that God and luck are the same thing, are they? Well, I wouldn't agree with that. God knows why things happen. Yeah, he's not letting on, though, is he? At least not to me. You know where you are with luck. Doesn't pretend to be something it isn't. Do you have any feelings about you? You're still arguing with God, even though you don't believe in him anymore. Oh, I believe in him. Just don't like his sense of humor. Natalie! Natalie! My daughter's getting married. All right. <laughs> Congratulations. Yeah. See you. Yeah. Yeah, it's great. So that's why he's been skipping around the place. It's not the only reason, no. <laughs> you don't know what you're doing, don't you? Not really. Hello, Samaritans, can I help you? So let's say there was this fella. Family man. Ripley? How did you know that you'd get me? Doesn't matter. It's just luck. 
Anyway, I thought your job was to listen. Okay. So this bloke goes home to see his wife. Because he's heard something about her that he didn't believe. What is it? What have you heard? Just let me tell the story. <laughs> so he goes home, and he can't find his wife anywhere. So he sits on the bed and he thinks. And while he's thinking, he notices that something's missing from the dressing table. And then he remembers a family photo of his wife and his two kids when his kids were small. And he thinks, my God, she's left me. Because what with this betrayal he's heard about it, it make perfect sense. So he goes to the wardrobe and in the bottom of the wardrobe, he finds an overnight bag, packed. And in the bag is the photo. So he knows he's right. And he goes and sits on the bed again. And he cries so hard, he thinks he's going to cough his fucking heart up. I'm sorry. Why should he be surprised, eh? You'd already sold him down the river. Already betrayed everything he believed in. I am. Um, I was just thinking of myself once. I just put myself first. You know this means it's over, don't you? Kaput. For you, for me, for all of us. Yeah. Yeah, I realise that. Because without those flats, I had to gamble. Because, you know, either way, I was sunk. I had no choice, it would twist or bust. Um, what have the flats got to do with it, Ed? Because if there's a trust for a kid, they can't be sold. And they were my last hope. Well, just tell me that. You didn't realise that when you did it. Just tell me that. The flats. Yeah, the flats. That's what we're talking about, isn't it? Oh, God. I'm sorry, Ripley. Yeah, we're talking about the flats, aren't we? <laughs> That's why you were going to leave, because you knew I'd find out. Wasn't it? What else could it be? Natalie. Things in the roof. Those are the little things that trip you up. I've sorted the float. Your mind. I thought you weren't coming. I'm not. You're here. I can't 
came because I wanted to explain. Because I thought the right thing to do was to tell you to your face. Hey, you're just panicking. That is all I said. No, no, no. I nearly told Ripley. I nearly gave myself away. And it was like... It was like staring off the top of a cliff. <laughs> I can't do this. I can't run away with you. You're asking me to give up everything that I've ever known. And I'm not strong enough. What was all that about this afternoon? Felt like the only thing you cared about was me. That was the Natalie that I'm going to be. But it's not who I am. Not really. Well, you wouldn't be the first person to use an affair to overcome a little marital difficulty, would you? If you love me as much as you say you do, then you could never think that. You have no idea. You really have no idea. Why don't you just... Piss off back then. Please, uh, please don't say that. I no longer have any interest in pleasing you, all right? So, it seems to me that what I say or don't say is none of your business. I don't want you to hate me. No, you have no say in how I feel, all right? You've just relinquished that particular right. Can't we at least... Can't we at least what? What? What, tell you, it doesn't matter. Well, it does. Or at least it would matter if I hadn't slept with you all along just to get to Ripley and your son. You don't mean that. Bye bye. Much seductive speech she persuades him. With this mood talk, she compels him right away. He follows her. He's like a bird rushing into a snare, not knowing it'll cost him his life. Proverbs. I can still hear my dear old dad repeating those words as he beat the shit out of me, because he found a copy of Fiesta under my mattress. Calm down, Ripley. What's happened? Come on, you can talk to me. You think I've come to bring peace to Earth? No, I tell you, but rather division. You, out, you bad. But I never win! Don't think I'm seen through that old trick! Oh, ah, yeah. Go on! We're shut! The dream's over! Go on! Let's your last! Out! Come on! Now! Come on, you and all! Go on, Chantal, out now! Seen your dad? Not since this morning. You try the arcade? Yeah, Ruth said he disappeared this afternoon and his mobile switched off. He'll be drowning his sorrow somewhere. Because me and Steve are still getting married despite his best efforts. Yeah, that'll be. What is it? Your dad thought I was gonna leave him. What? Well, what gave him that idea? There was a packed bag in the wardrobe, and he found it. So why isn't he here shouting and kicking windows out? Yeah, well, that's what I'm worried about. I haven't seen or heard from him since. Do you think he's going to do something daft? Well, he's your dad, isn't he? Of course he is. No, I mean... like, hurt himself. No. No, of course he wouldn't.
Tears of rain run down my window pane. I'm on my own again. Good evening, sorrow. Sit and dream of how things might have been. And as I close my eyes, I get the strangest. Take off your coat and come inside.